Recorded live with little or no editing, it's Defense Up. I'm Run7. How you doing? Today we're going to be going over Warzone's defense, and speaking of war, we need to talk about the changes coming to war. We've got things like ISO level 4 and war ready characters on the horizon. It looks like this one's going to stick. They've gone two play tests now. They're really, I think they're, they're going to make this happen. They did away with us purchasing the extended rooms. So we will have 10 defensive teams, but you don't need to purchase it with your war credits or your uh, whatever credits system they had planned. Don't worry about it. You don't need to hoard that stuff. You can go ahead and spend it. But we are going to have 10 defensive teams, which means we will have more junk in our defense than ever before. Uh, wars will be shorter and faster with more energy up front and more energy turning over and a higher energy cap. So it's going to be important for you to get your entire alliance ready at the start of war and have them go into it. If you give any kind of a care about war, that's how you're going to have to play it. So uh, fast and vicious. It'll be over soon. Let's lock in my chair before I start swinging around like a monkey in here. <clears throat> Okay, the important thing about ISO level four to know is that your war ready characters need to have ISO level four, that's green ISO at level four for them to get the bonuses from what will be cargo bay and hangar, which used to be two of the relatively unimportant rooms that people would just skip over. They're gonna be two of the most important rooms now. It's a global bonus that affects your defensive and I think all characters respectively. They get like 20% stats across the board, stuff like that. Um, we'll get into the details when things become solid, but know that you're gonna need to be turning up the dial on characters like Merc Lieutenant who has three, might as well take him to four. So it's gonna be really important that you know exactly which ISOs you want to have on your war tunes, that you understand how much it's going to cost and what the benefits are for putting those ISOs up to level four, and then lock them in on your defense and, and, and make sure they're running right. My advice to you guys, don't worry about it so much. Don't worry about it so much. Don't invest in characters unless you're certain you're going to get value with them outside of war. War doesn't reward us enough. I mean, we've, we've had multiple content creators go over the math on this. To make a team effective as a defensive team in war, it costs you X amount. And... Even if everybody in your alliance is doing the same, the victories that you will gain are only short term, and then you'll go back to a 50-50 win-loss ratio, and eventually you will not be getting the, you won't be getting the payout to cover the investment. So uh, put characters in, here's the best way to do it. Build for raids, uh, build for arena, then build for dark dimension, um, then maybe build for war offense and after that whatever's left over on your roster you throw in on war defense like wh whatever you're not using on war offense that's what you use on war defense and don't invest in it because just war just doesn't pay enough it just doesn't pay so now that i have completely thrown myself under the bus as usual let's talk about how to build your war defense <clears throat> All right, team number one. Oh, we grade on five door criteria. Who you're using, their placement, their power levels, their ISOs, and what kind of mood I'm in. So here we go. Uh, Merc Lieutenant as Shuri with Killmonger. This is, um, in my opinion, the second best uh, or even third best build, really. I tested this thoroughly. I don't get as good a results with Shuri in there as I do with a straight Merc build or a Merc with Ultimus build. So I really think that it should be Korath and Bullseye. Um, if you don't have Bullseye developed, you should consider then putting an Ultimus because you gotta build one of them, might as well build Ultimus. I think Ultimus does great against the Skilletary. At this power level right here, you're gonna have, um, X-Force is gonna have trouble beating this team. So you're gonna see Skilletary come into it. Skilletary is gonna mow over this if you don't have Ultimus in there. So for you, I think Ultimus is a good idea. Um, let's check out these ISOs right here. I, that's a big no-no on the Merc team. Um, Taskmaster is a skirmisher, just straight up. You need to be bringing out his potential on those uh, vulnerables, those bonus attacks, all that stuff. What happens is he places, he count, he assists when a Merc attacks, places the vulnerable, the game then checks for the vulnerable and has the Merc do, do a bonus 
ISO attack. So you get three attacks where you would normally get two. Um, and him placing that vulnerable is, is very helpful. Really brings out the damage potential. And if you have fast characters like Koreth or Bullseye, yeah, they don't do much, but they're fast and they make Taskmaster go fast. You know, 160K, you got a good investment in them. Use them. So uh, Killmonger is, is, is still good on this team, but he has a better synergy with that Raider ISO and can be used with like Dad Bros or something to crit more often, something like that. Um, great tune, lots of value in him. I just don't like him on this team. So I think it should be, I think that you should go Taskmaster, Merc Lieutenant, Merc Riot Guard, Bullseye, and then Korath should be your lineup. I think if you're gonna run this team, then you should swap places with Taskmaster and Lieutenant then, because she doesn't need healing. Um, actually, I think a better lineup would be Swap places with Shuri and Taskmaster. Yeah, go Taskmaster, Merc Lieutenant, Riot Guard, then Shuri, then uh, Killmonger. Killmonger has that self-healing feature. He does okay on his own too. But um, yeah, so fix that placement. You got Healer, 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 Striker, and Raider. Man, those ISOs are so screwed up. Let's go Let's go Healer on Shuri. Let's go Striker on Lieutenant, because with, with Shuri in here, you don't need the extra healing from Lieutenant. You want the damage output, so make him a Striker. Striker on Riot Guard, Skirmisher on Taskmaster, and keep uh, Killmonger the same as a Striker. Um, yeah, lots of, lots of things you can do to fix this up. Also, uh, because you don't want X-Force coming in here and knocking one of these characters below 50%, you need to bring up the power levels on these three just a touch. Killmonger for sure. Um, the defense up that she's giving him is going to help with that, but not enough. So make sure you bring up the power levels there. That'll absolutely uh, Ixnay and X-Force coming in here. At that point, then it's going to be Skilletary only. And we're not coming across a lot of Skilletary, so that might be an okay build. Is, is keeping these characters in here, fixing their placement, fixing their ISOs, bringing up some of those power levels to match the team, and it'll be a really formidable uh, Merc team. But as is, you've got a lot of mistakes going on with this team, so I'm gonna give you a C minus for that. Team number two is a straight up shield team. No Colson, no Kestrel, terrible power levels, bad placement, no ISOs. This is an absolute F. It's an absolute F. Why is it an F? You wasted resources on this guy. This guy has no place anywhere but the bottom of your roster. 41k? Ouch. That's bad. Don't do that. Okay, the best build for the shield minion team. Get Kestrel in here. Or not Kestrel. Get uh, Colson in here on this team. Colson's going to help it out. Brotherhood blows it away, but whatever. Uh, then you're going to go shield uh, security followed by... Colson followed by Medic followed no followed by Assaulter followed by Medic followed by Fury Fury will give adjacent energy to Medic Medic will help revive Colson so Colson can catch the splash damage off of shield security and be revived all the time shield security is going to be a pain in the ass Assaulter as a raider is going to give extra crit chance to everybody else everybody on the team should be a raider except for Medic as a healer yeah, uh, and then you're just going to go for speed and explosive crit damage off, uh, with that build. Again, Brotherhood blows it away. Brotherhood 2.0 just blows that team away. So throwing Kestrel in on that team instead of Assaulter really brings out its damage potential, makes it makes it a lot tougher. I don't. I think it's a waste of a Kestrel myself. Um, and honestly, your your team has no... This team is not worth investing in at all. I mean, this is just junk. The, the the reason like if i saw that this guy had no investment in him i'd give you a d because you weren't wasting too much you're just throwing stuff in on a defense but because you put so much into this assaulter guy oh my god uh take the team apart use the new the secret avengers use the secret avengers you know um yeah this is trash get some level one isos on these guys at least I mean, it costs you next to nothing to put level one ISOs on these guys. Raiders for everybody on, on that team. Uh, yeah, that's an F. Let's, we can do better than that. 
Team number three is the Asgardians, and like I said in the previous video, Asgardians have no right being on defense. I know their kits say defensive characters. They have been countered to hell and back. Uh, speaking of hell, uh, Hela is the liability for the team, and you have the wrong ISO on her. If you're going to be running the five-piece, she should be a striker. He places the taunt, places the vulnerable. She attacks into that taunt with the vulnerable, does a counterattack off of it, annihilates that person, spreads all those negative effects. It's a thing to behold. However, it won't happen against the symbiotes who will feed off of her Greg, get that turn meter ramped up so fast that the, vul that the, uh, the taunt goes away and she's not going to be hitting the right person. Sif should not be a fortifier. She's always the last one to die on this team, so don't worry about that. He should be a raider, not a healer. He should be a raider, not a striker. I know you're going for damage output there, but his basic does not do anything for you. Um, you're trying... Off of her team, Hela should be a raider. So keep that ISO, break up this team. Put Thor on the wave one Avengers. Get rid of these three. Loki doesn't even have any value in the game anymore. Like I'm, I'm trying to find places to use him and I just don't. I just don't use him anymore. Same thing with these two. They, they got no use outside of this team. So the team's a liability at any power level. Uh, get them out of here. Build something better like the wave one Avengers with Thor. Use Hela on the Supernatural team for offense. She's fantastic there. Keeper is a raider. Um, if you're going to be running this five piece though, man. Yeah, get that change to a striker if you're going to be running the five piece. But that's obviously not worth it. So break up the team. Um, I think anymore I'm giving people an F for these as guardians. It's just a waste of resources. It's a liability on your defense. Get rid of them. Team number four is Hydra Red Skull 1.0. Okay, so we've got, yeah, we got those. You got ISO level three across the board. ISOs on this team don't matter so much. I like doing like straight fortifier for everybody just making, cause they're dying and reviving all the time. And things like healer, that rejuve goes up above their head, but you end up killing them before they take a turn. And so the rejuve doesn't really get applied. I think fortifier is a better way to go because then no matter who you're attacking, who you're killing over and over, if you're not doing a, a trick like a surfer or a black bolt or something like that, if you're just straight punching down into this team and getting those kills over and over, Fortifier tends to get the best uh, viability with this team because every time they're getting that bonus barrier that, that a person has to attack through. However, uh, Rifle Trooper as a Raider is still good. Uh, Scientist as a Healer is still good. These, these are synergistic ISOs. Fortifier on Red Skull is my favorite. Um, because by the time you get to him, he's, you know, he's taken some turns and has built up some barrier. Uh, striker on Sniper is, is good. There's synergy there. He actually hits hard for a crappy old, like, launch day minion. So that's okay. Like, these are okay ISOs. Uh, Fortifier on this guy, not so much because he's pretty slow, but, eh, whatever. Um, I'm not gonna dock you for these ISOs because on this team, the ISOs don't matter. It's all about that cheese ball revive mechanic. Um, at this power level, you're not scaring anybody. Um, I would come into it with a 300 level uh, power armor, although power armor is a crap team. I just have one because I'm old school and I have, I have one from back in the day. I would never invest in my power armor at this point to use, but at this level, a 300 power armor is great. They'll put defense down on him and Tony Stark will blow him away and I don't have to use any of my good teams to get rid of this. It's just a free kill for me. Otherwise... Um, like I said, uh, a Black Bolt makes this team die quickly. Um, Silver Surfer would make this team die quickly. Although, if you're seeing any of those characters come into this team, then you could count it as a victory. If somebody's wasting their Silver Surfer to strip the charges off of Red Skull, you've won. Um, honestly, do nothing with this team. Do nothing with this team. Um, if ISO level four, you know, war ready characters become a thing, you might consider tapping one more ISO on them to give them those percentage boosts and make this team that much better. But I think this is great. Uh, this is an A. I, I think your your placement is fine. You might you might consider swapping these two, but even that's that's an that's an argument. So I'm I'm giving you an A, a for this. There's no waste of resources. It is something that you either have to come into with like a 300 power iron, uh, power armor, 300 level, 300 power power armor, or 
something like a black bolt or something like uh, you know it's you know you gotta have to punch down into it or something control it somehow so it's just a nuisance and i think you're doing well with it um team number five this is your wave one here's your colson that should be used elsewhere get thor in and place a colson he doesn't have i mean he's got shield synergy and stuff but it's not enough it doesn't work well with this team change your placement you need captain it should be captain america uh hulk then black widow then thor and then hawkeye you've got good red stars on the team you've got a big investment in this team already definitely need to put thor in over here healers on these guys that's that's good uh skirmisher striker combo on those two that's good thor as a raider in over here and what else uh i can't believe you don't have seven stars on hulk you should probably check your achievements tab and see how many of those those extra shards are laying around in there or something click those red dots um you're not doing too bad you just got to get thor in here because this what what's 17k doing on this team with no isos like what is what's going on with that i'm i'm very curious um they're already war ready so yeah get thor in here at iso level four as a raider so uh give you um i mean this team is like is like a c because of this re weird thing you've got going on here like x-force could come in here and you know get that speed boost and start laying ability blocks in here and stuff like that so i don't know what's going on with this um if you put thor in here as a raider with comparable uh power levels then you get an a for the team team number six defenders instead of heroes for hire i don't know why you don't have colleen wing and, and misty knight in here um and then of course when you get shang chi get them in here because that's a even at low stars low red low yellow low red and yet man i cannot talk today at low red and yellow stars those characters make this team way way better um let's see i like the fortifier i like raider i like healer i like skirmisher although raider's another choice and skirmisher is good for her too i just don't like these these people this this three piece in the center you need to get rid of it and get the actual heroes for higher build going um he's good on skeletary he's good on shadowlands she's good on the bench and i mean maybe you built this from back in the day but i mean if you don't if you don't have seven stars on hulk you can't be that long term of a player so why the hell did you build defenders i'm not sure i'm not sure what's going on with that maybe i'm missing something tell me in the comments what i'm missing why you've got defenders if you're not that old of a player um but you know build shadowlands for an offensive team um they aren't good outside of war but they are a great offensive team they go good up against almost anybody and then skilletary is falling off i can't recommend investing in skilletary as an offensive war team they don't just they just don't have the viability anywhere else and because they're on the decline eh, they're not useful enough to build but that's where he goes and jessica jones of course goes on the bench um although i mean you're not i don't know it is what it is it's this team just doesn't excite me i'm giving you a c for it because it's boring team number seven is your doc ox sinister six team you've got the right characters in here but um your power levels obviously are super wonky thing is i can't recommend you invest in this team they're just not good enough they're just not good enough to invest in what sucks is that these are the best two um sub characters i mean you've got your legendary and then the surrounding characters your assisting characters these are the best two and you haven't touched them uh man i don't know i think you should break the team up make a hybrid defense with him on it he has a lot of viability you could still use these two characters they just they just aren't that good i mean you got high red stars on both of them they just aren't that great he's gonna be summoning rhino i believe if you have these two in here <clears throat> which that's not bad rhino as the the summons actually makes for a, a good summons because he's kind of tanky and it makes it a little bit harder for symbiotes to destroy but symbiotes are gonna come in here and just tap these guys and get going so you've you've ruined yourself by putting those two in here anybody with higher power level is going to be better than these two at this point so swap them out for literally anyone in your roster that's around 60 70k just to help keep the symbiotes from 
uh, tearing through this team. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? You've got Striker, Skirmisher, and Healer on these guys. That's great. You can take Doc Ock all the way up to uh, G15, 7 stars, and 5 ISO Healer. That would be fine. He's useful. One of the last legendaries that still has use, like him and Jubilee. Man, they're better than uh, Adam Warlock, in my opinion. I find more usefulness for, the, for him and Jubilee than I do Warlock. Um... Yeah, get these guys out of here. They're good if you want to build them later, maybe. But let's wait and see if we get other Sinister Six members before you go investing in these tunes. Yeah, this is a huge liability. Swap them out with something else. You're getting an F for this. This is just, I mean, any anybody's going to come in and just destroy this team right away because of this, this liability you have right here. Otherwise, you've got the right ISOs. You've got the right characters. You've got the right placement. Um... Yeah, I just can't recommend investing in the team. There's an F for that. All right, Inhumans team. Again, you've got this wonky power level that in this day and age creates a real liability. I don't know what to do with this. Uh, use Black Bolt on offense on one of those hybrid teams to go in for the Heroes for Hire that doesn't have Shang-Chi. Um, bring up the power level of Crystal to match the other four. Swap her out with maybe Coulson or Silver Surfer. Um, or even Captain America. Or not Captain, Captain Marvel even might be okay in here. Gosh, this is just... Yeah, this is kind of a waste of resources. You've got you've got usable characters. These four characters have a little bit of value on a different defense. Um, this has value in offense and raids. Um, gosh. But what you're doing with this is garbage. Okay, you've got Striker, that's good. Skirmisher, that's good. Skirmisher, that's correct. Raider, that's correct. Raider's correct on her too, but just get her off the team. She's trash. And power up Ke uh, Crystal a little bit. I mean, unfortunately, she only has value on a war defense team pretty much at this point. I mean, you could use your Inhumans on offense. Um, Karnak is trash, so she's better now that you've had her invested. Plus, on defense, she kind of has, you know, that that taunt that she throws up. So, I don't know. This is kind of an F team because it's it's so wonky. You got to get better tunes in here. Build a better defense with this one. So, lots to work on on this lineup. It's important to remember that in war defense, you want to take whatever's left over build the best teams that you can without investing your resources into them wait and see what comes down the pipe if there's new characters that are going to make our war defenses better if they actually start rewarding us with something useful something meaningful to put into these defenses but uh for the most part you, you've got to try and build the shiniest turd that's really where we're at in war defense right now so if you like this video uh you know like and subscribe uh, leave comments. Let me know what you think on some of these theory crafting ideas. If you've got ideas for better builds, please let me know. I try to use them in my uh, next videos. I'm always getting ideas from other people. I do not have the best ideas. I just have my opinions. And uh, yeah, so don't just uh, have a good game. Be good to yourself and others too. Thanks. Bye.